Good evening. If you've never used the uh, TC Helicon Play Acoustic like I hadn't when I got it, I was totally lost. And so I had to dig around and scrounge for information and I couldn't really find much of anything. So I'm hoping this video will be instructive to help people out to kind of figure the thing out to get started. So let me get you started right off the bat and at least explain a little bit about some of the functions here that you're looking at. Um, your microphone is going to go in here. You got a mic in. You have a guitar in. So if you're playing guitar, uh, you want to run your guitar in here. Or if you have a guitar player in your group, you probably want them to run their guitar in here, or at least a lead through here. The band I'm in, the guitarist runs his own guitar, feeds me a, a link, a, a line out here, and so the unit can read it. Because you want a guitarist uh, to come in to read it, uh, because that way it helps your harmonies. It reads the chords, it reads the notes and the tones uh, to know your harmonies. You have an auxiliary in, I'm not sure exactly what that's for, I don't really use it. Uh, pedal I don't really use. Uh, so you've got inputs here for mic and guitar, and then you have the outputs over here. So here it says out right here, my finger's covering it. It says out, so you got a voice out, so your voice comes in over here, your voice goes back out over here, guitar comes in here, guitar comes back out over here. It does have a built-in DI, so you won't necessarily need a DI box. And if you don't know what a DI box is, go look it up, read about it. I don't know the technical term for it. I just know it helps reduce buzz and uh, other problems with electronics. Good thing to have, so you don't have to buy a separate DI box. This one has it built in. You've got a headphone jack. You also have a USB in the back for connecting and backing up. Maybe I'll do another video on that. And you also have power, of course. Um, the only thing I, the one drawback on this unit that I wish it had was the on-off button but you just have to unplug the uh, power, turn it off and plug it back in. So let's get you started just real quickly, show you a little bit how we do that, uh, some of the settings. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit here so you can see the screen a little better. So we'll take a quick look at the setup screen. So I'm gonna go in here and set up. So this is a screen you'll see when you're doing your setup. Uh, these buttons on the side correspond with the little it's getting out of focus. They correspond with the little screen that you see on the inside. So the, the top left button would correspond with the one that's lit up. This one, as you can see, lights that one up. This one. So if you want to change any of these settings, use these buttons on the side. Um, also, to get from page to page when you're setting up, you can use this button to jump to the next page. And of course, the buttons will do the same thing. You can select whichever feature you want. And uh, let me just explain a little bit about what some of these features do. The basic ones that you'll need is to select the type of input or mic that you're using. And to do that, you highlight this like I just did. And you come down here and use this little knob right here. And you can turn it, make changes however you need to. Um, I don't know that they make huge differences. Some of them probably would. I know mine did make a difference uh, because I am using the Play Acoustic or the TC Helicon adapter on my mic. I'm using a regular Dynamic Sure SM58, but when I put the adapter on, it uh, actually stopped working. So I had to come in and make some minute changes uh, to get it to work. So now on my mic, I can use it on and off of my mic as well, uh, and not have to use the foot pedal, which is kind of handy when you're performing. Um, as far as setup, uh, this mix button right here would be if you have a guitar running through, uh, this little input right here, this little light that I'm pointing to the left, is your indicator, your level indicator for your guitar, your input. So if your guitar is too loud, uh, you can pop into your setup again. Uh, setup's right over here. That's where we are. You can pop in here, go to this page. And then what you can do is you can tweak. See how it goes down, 7 dB, 8 dB, 9 dB. Um, so you can tweak your levels. What you want to do is while the guitar player is playing, warming up, you want to make sure this, this is only staying on green. If it's redlining and going to red, you need to lower your level a little bit. And so once you do that, you get all your settings done, you hit store right over here to the right, and store will store all of your settings and then you come back out. 
Actually, I think it does take you back out. I'm not going to make any settings to mine right now. Um, let's see, other setup settings. I think that's about it. Now, the other thing to get your uh, sound levels right that you probably want to do as well is next you want to go to mix. This is the mix of sound that's coming through the unit. So right here, again, the same rules apply. The buttons are going to uh, indicate which setting you're on. You can select whichever one you want. And so what you can do is, here's guitar level. Where we're, before we set the input level, this is the guitar level coming out uh, in your mix. So you don't want to, the first time we were setting to make sure we weren't redlining coming in too hot. Now what this is doing is um, kind of setting the level going out. Because if it comes in too hot, I've had an experience where my harmonies were kind of uh, becoming distorted. And I think part of that, number one, there is a gain button too. On the left-hand side of the unit, uh, over here on the left, which I can't show you right now, uh, you'll see a little black knob, and that's your gain uh, adjustment. So I've got mine at about the, what? I don't know, about... 20% right now, about a quarter of the way uh, from the left. Uh, you run it too hot and you're going to blow everything out and make it sound too distorted. So what you want to do, uh, typically, you have guitar level that we talked about. I don't know loop level, don't use loop much. Room sense actually is, uh, I believe, where it'll pick up ambient sound and help you with your um, harmonies. So if it's not reading the guitar, it can read the room. I believe that's what that is. Uh, of course, headphones, I don't use much. And then your output level overall, I've got mine a little bit about half. But you can just set all these levels here and then of course, make sure it's sounding good through your PA and then you can adjust the PA from there. But you wanna, actually if you're having guitar and vocals running through this, you wanna make sure one's not too much louder than the other and you're getting a good mix before you run into your PA of course. So you got guitar input we talked about. We've got guitar output now that we talked about. Uh, some of the features. Um, now this is some of the other buttons on here. Uh, you've got up and down. This is to cycle through some of your uh, sound settings or your um, emulations that you have on board. And then your hit button, this is what activates. See, you hear my voice change, right? So I activated a harmony here and you kick it back off. Now, normally I have this on the floor. I put this up on my mic stand just so I can get to it and talk about it a little bit. Um, nonetheless, these are some good starting points for you, good starting places for you. I'm gonna do another video to uh, show how to adjust uh, and you know, manipulate your own custom settings and how to store them. I'll do that next, but hopefully this is at least good for setup, get you started, and uh, hey, rock on.